All right, let's pray the cops. That's the sound of the police. You better start talking. Jason Lawrence. Answer me. Probe the popo. Tell me what you know. All right. Every couple of weeks, we get a different area of the Victorian police in. Today, yes. we are catching up with Sergeant Elise Dobson. She is the top dog at Werribee Police Station. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in. Can I ask, you're the... Officer in charge at Werribee Police Station. How long have you been in the police force to get there? Uh, we're going on 14 years. Wow. And do you love it? I do love it. Yeah. Still love it after all that time. Are the people in the West well behaved? Um, well, I'm from the West, so I'll answer that carefully. <laughs> 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 Bit of a mixture. Yeah, fair. Um, just in the news on the weekend, we we're seeing police stations um, being shut down because of lack of personnel um, and stuff like that. How many units would you guys have out on a normal day in your area? Well, look at Werribee, we're servicing a pretty large area, so we try to have uh, three to four uh, core van units per shift. Yeah. Um, it's not s- many, though, for all the dramas, though, is there? Mm. Like just- no. Uh, look, we're, we kind of um, struggle with that many vans. It's not unusual for a van to log on at the start of the shift um, and be given 15 jobs just to start with. <gasps> wow. Oh and that keeps gosh. going. So, so are, yeah. you under, are you understaffed? Are you guys feeling the pinch? We're definitely feeling the pinch. Um, we're getting more lately, um, but, yeah, it's definitely a juggle trying to triage yeah. all those jobs. And, and being the sergeant, do you go out on the jobs or do you just get to sit there with the feet up and the coffee mug and say, <laughs> Barry, you're on. Um, robbery, go. Look, I think when I was a constable, that's what the sergeants did. But gotcha. these days. Um, <laughs> but, no, I, I enjoy getting out there too, so I'm definitely out so, there. So Werribee's a big station, right? Because uh, you've got detectives there. You've got, I assume you've got Highway Patrol as well. They're based out of there, do you? Highways actually out of Altona, okay, but they right. do service our area as well. Yeah, so it's a busy place to be. So how many sort of officers are under your watch? Oh gosh, um, it's a it's it's huge. Yeah, I think. It, well, look, I don't I don't manage um, the detectives. Yeah. They've got their own sergeants and senior sergeants. Um, we also have a proactive unit there, mm. so um, specialist police that look after the kids and um, you know vulnerable community. Yeah, wow. we have a transit unit as well. Um, as well as our uniform, so. Um, can I ask, because there is a lot of media reports about our youth crime. It's out of control. Kids are stealing cars. Kids are stealing cars and crashing cars. Kids are stealing cars, crashing cars and killing people. And these kids are getting let back out to do it time and time again. And the police do such an amazing job trying to find them and then catch them and then do all the paperwork and then they're back on the streets. That's frustrating. How frustrated are the Victorian police about having to arrest the same people over and over and over again? Oh, look, it's definitely something that we're dealing with every day. I think there's a bit of a misconception that we're perhaps ourselves are not, we're giving them bail or we're, you know. Because I do think there is a misunderstanding that people think the police aren't doing their jobs and you guys are doing an amazing job. If anything, I feel for the cops. Yeah. It would be so frustrating catching re-offenders and then well, seeing them back out on the street. It doesn't make courts. you angry. Look, it does. Um, look, I'm, I'm aware it's kind of a bigger issue than um, yeah. just kind of arresting and locking them up. But, you know, they're coming from quite dysfunctional families. And, yeah. I'm, you know, not we still need to treat them as such. You know, if they're committing serious offences, they need to be held accountable. But I think there's probably just something missing in, um, you know, how we can better support the families to be able to deal with the kids. Otherwise, we're going to just keep coming back to the same issue. Yeah. Mm. As a, I, I hope the answer to this question is what I think it is, but as a senior female member of the force, do you get the respect you deserve when you're in the community? Yeah, I mean, you always get a few cheeky comments, yeah. but I think I'm, I can deal with that. So, yeah, um, yeah look. Because you have to have a pretty thick skin, right? You do, yeah, and I do, luckily. Most most people do in this job, and if you don't, you'll um, get it pretty quick. Yeah, God, you're more. So, do male police me. officers? Do you feel like females, female police officers, get treated the same as males, or it is still different? Um, look, you always get a few different people yeah. um, with their different thoughts, but yeah. um, you know, I think if you go in and just um, you know do the job like everyone else is doing, then you'll quickly get treated the same. Yeah, get. The What's respect. um? So I've got a mate who's an Ambo, and he was running through the different codes that they get called to. Mm. And the different speed limits they're about to do, uh, they're allowed to do. So, like oh. in a police chase and stuff, say if you're in a patrol car, you're chasing Clint, he's taken off down the freeway. You can't just do whatever your speed you want to get him. Is that right? Is there a percentage that you're allowed to travel? Um, look, if it's, we're going to try and do it as safe as we can. Yeah. Um, 
it's quarter maybe a priority one if it's something that we're um, you know we need to get there because we it's you know determined that it's there's a risk to the public if we don't do that mm. yep um, but we do have other resources like the air wing um, and you know doing other cheeky little things so we can get our offenders Stop without sticks. <laughs> yeah. gotcha. oh, okay, do, we, do, we have, do we have the spikes here in Australia where we throw them out uh, yeah absolutely yeah Sick. that's one of the things we use Sick. quite regularly Sick. yeah that'd be fun yeah, yeah. And roll them out and watch the little car just puff along that'd be good we should take it down to another radio station <laughs> yeah. as they're leaving at nine o'clock just, oh got you thief <laughs> um Facebook Marketplace, we were talking about it earlier. Now, Werribee, where you're stationed, um, we're sorry, you're, you're in charge, is one of these exchange points. Um, what can you tell us about the, the initiative? Yeah, it's a brand new initiative um, where people can come and do their Facebook exchanges under the CCTV, in, you know, quite close to the station, either in the car park or up near the doors. Um, and it's designed to assist people doing that safely. We get a lot of um, reports of deceptions or robberies yeah. Um, yeah. that are happening, you know, with these Facebook exchanges. God, so. wouldn't you love to be the constable assigned to that job? So I'm just going to watch the people exchange <laughs> yeah. the money for the mattress. I All right, know, this is but how then I got also, the if they're doing it in the car park, what about when you guys need to get the cars out and you're like, oh, God, she's got her mattress over there. She's yeah. got her sofa put in there. Can you move your out to a spa, please? Yeah. I need to get the patrol car yeah. around. I've got work to do. <laughs> so I would suggest not doing furniture there. Okay. Right, okay, gotcha. Just Pokemon cards. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, um, we've got to take a break. Uh, we are doing Probe the Popo this morning. Sergeant Elise Dobson is on the air with us. Coming up next, this is going to sound crazy, but I want to know about what snacks are served to people when they're in the holding cells. In the clink. In the clink. What sort of treatment do you get? I yeah. dare say, not a great deal. Well, you never know. You never know. <laughs> Is it a digger station? We'll find out. It's definitely not a digger station. We are probing the paper this morning. If you have a question at all for the sergeant, 13 24 10. Nothing's off limits. You are on the air with Jace and Lauren Clint here as well, and says so the paper. <laughs> That's the sound that I'm wanting. You'll first start talking. Jace and Lauren's. Probe the popo. Tell me what you know. Sergeant Elise Dobson is in the house. Uh, she is the officer in charge at Werribee Police Station. If you have a question. Doing a great job, might I add. A what? mum of four. I know. Who goes out to the police force every day. We were asking before, do your kids get worried about you doing it? Yeah, definitely my boys are quite protective. Um, and they, yeah, they do ask me to do another job. But that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, What's... it's funny, though, because we see police officers and I think people forget that these are men and women who have yep. husbands and wives and families and babies and children and parents at home. I think sometimes people forget the human behind police officers, which is why we love having you guys on the show because it reminds everyone these are real-life humans who are putting their lives and their, you know, well-being at risk to look after other people. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. I think everyone just sees the uniform and that's kind of all you are at that time. Um, holding cells. Do you guys have them at Werribee? Sure do. Right. So, and then... Uh, what do you think happens there? Well, I got, a, tu- I got a tour of the ones at Sandy once. Oh, yeah. And a on- tour or a... a- no, no, no. It was Why a tour or an overnight stay. <laughs> they, they said bring the kids Drunk in. We'll disorderly. show you the police station. Oh. And we opened one cell and it reeked of urine. Oh. Yeah, I think someone had a mishap in there. A mishap. I'd- Pissed themselves. Um, what's the food that gets served if I'm in the holding cell? Do they feed you? Yeah, we do. Yep. Uh-huh. It's it's actually not that bad. Um, it's kind of imagine a bit of a microwave meal. Is there an option like the beef or the chicken? There or- is an option. Oh. Yeah. No. It's like you're on Qantas. Qantas yeah. don't give you an option. No, good point. <laughs> they just throw like that little enchilada at you. Yeah. So be quiet. No, I've seen some hungry police in desperate times eating a meal at night mm. as well. So, so you guys <laughs> will have frozen meals in the police freezer. Yes. For people that are in the cells. Yeah, and some biscuits, some cordial. Is it only if they ask? Yeah, I mean, we'll offer as well if they're here for a long time. You guys we'll hungry? After them. Well, yeah. Especially those drunken disorderly types. Oh, I mean, yeah. Are you, not, just, are you, you shipping know. in any French fries? Because that'd sober them up. Oh, yeah. yeah. If I was in a holding cell and you wanted the best out of me, throw me. Throw get me, us a kebab. Get me a cheeseburger and a large fries and I'll tell you whatever you want. It's a good idea. It's a great it's idea. It's a great tactic. Actually. Do you reckon that's how Is they break them? sponsored by Mac. It's Nikki D's. <laughs> the 80s would give them a pack of cigarettes and they'd spill. Yeah, like Nowadays, the it's a happy meal. And so, do you get some strange requests for pe- from people in holding cells? Like, oh, I'd like a Diet Coke and some M&Ms. Well, yes, we do get people thinking that they can Uber Eats as well sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not on. <laughs> that's funny. Do they have their phones? <laughs> no. No phone. <laughs> um, all right, let's go to Kim in Sunbury. What's your question for the sergeant? Good morning. Um, so my daughter got scammed on the weekend 
trying to buy, trying to buy um, Coldplay tickets. Oh, um, no. Yeah, so the video looked all legit and everything, but what I want to know is, so um, she's reported it to Facebook and they've blocked her and everything, but are we supposed to report that to the police? I know you probably can't do anything, but what's the process? Yeah, there's an online reporting system now on cyber.com, which right. is the best way to report it. Um, it then gets triaged and sent out um, to the appropriate authority. Some of it's done overseas, so it might need to go to the federal police. Gotcha. Um, or, you know, safe. But, but it is worth us putting the complaint in because, like, my car because got. Because if there's a hundred of them and it's the same. Well, that's the thing. My car got ransacked a couple of months back and nothing got taken. But the cops are like, no, we still want to come and take fingerprints and everything because that person might Builds have done case. eight other houses. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely report it. You can do it now online um, or through our PAL number as well. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's the number when you need the police, but it's not an emergency. Is that that? I've seen that ad. Yeah. What's, what's, I don't know the number. Uh, what's the number again? It's uh, triple. It's not triple O. No, it's, it's not triple O. 1-800-POLICE. Hey, this is cute. <laughs> no, it's not 1-800-POLICE. It's something else. <laughs> well, let's go to Ed in Mornington. G'day, Ed. Hi. How old are you, buddy? I'm 12. And what's your question for the sergeant? Um, I was just wondering how long do you have to be in the... Police Academy for. Oh, like, do, you, do, you get... do you want to be a police officer when you grow up, Ed? Yes, I do. Oh, oh cool. good on you, mate. He sounds official too, is doesn't Hightower he? Hightower at the Academy? <laughs> Hightower is not at the Academy. Okay. How long? Hi, Ed. It's about nine months now at the Academy, um, and you'll then come out to a station where you'll be a probationary constable where you're still learning for about two years. Oh, oh good. Okay. And do they play? Do they play this music at yes, the academy? They do. Yeah, that's the graduation music. <laughs> this is the graduation yeah. music they yeah. play. Is that true, Sergeant? Ah, uh, similar. Gotcha. Oh my gosh! How good. Oh, Ed, so yeah, sweet. Yeah, so cute. So Ed's twelve. So can he be accepted in the next uh, batch? Uh, maybe a few more years, okay. Ed. Um, so yeah, I'll look forward to meeting you. Yeah, Lovely. I Eighteen. I don't think we want to give Ed a taser just yet. No. Do you know what I mean? Oh. But what should Ed do if he wants to be a police officer when he grows up? Does he need to stay fit and healthy or? Yeah, absolutely. I'd suggest, Ed, that you stay um, fit, go to the gym, do your sports, um, make sure you're a good boy because you need to have a good, clean record. Oh, you do? Yes. Do, you, do you think us three would pass the physical? Okay, well, who who would pass the physical? Let's Out of us three question. at the police academy, would I? I mean, we'll have to do some push-ups and have a look. Oh, how many? <laughs> You've only got to do five, so I feel like you can... Is oh, that it? That's Is it. that it? Yeah. Five. Be a police yeah. officer. If I do yeah. five, I'm, that's it. I can Come on. There's some other go. things, no, but let's that, see. That's not... Okay, here we go. One, two... That's actually pretty good. Three. I'm impressed by that. Four. Five. Well done. Give me a gun. They, no. were, they were good push-ups. <laughs> they no, were the, actually, I'm, yeah. uh, uh, what? That surprised me. Well done. I've always said I'm deep, deep undercover fit. Yeah, yeah but, but what about all the skeletons you've got in your closet? Yeah, you got to have it. Oh, yeah. yeah you you've been to court before. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the go with that? You can't have a criminal record. No, can you? you'll be out. Can 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 you be a baddie turned goodie and become a police officer? <laughs> like a redemption type of... Yeah, is there any of those? No. No, once you're, once you're baddie, you're a baddie. <laughs> yeah. I don't Bad think boys for life. I don't think they call them baddies. Baddies and goodies. goodies. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lauren summed it up before. Thank you for all the work you do. Uh, we love the Victorian police and, and, you know, we know there is a human side to it. You guys are parents, your partners, but, um, yeah, thank you. No problem. And stay safe. Don't take any crap. Yes. Yeah. Huh? And that number, when you need the oh, police, yeah. but it's not, not an emergency. It's not 1-800-POLICE. <laughs> it's one three one triple four. You know what? You need to get a campaign going like what Pizza Hut used to have. one three one four four four. one three one four four four. We'll one, work on three, the campaign one, for you. Catchy, isn't it? <laughs> when you need the police, but it's not an emergency. I like it. It is just Catchy. gone. Five past eight. This is Nova. Gonna be a good day. Jason Lauren. Jason Lauren. Wake up feeling good. On Nova 100. Jason Lauren. Follow them on socials. Nova.